Hello YouTube, um, just thought I'd make a quick video of a recent experiment I've been uh, playing around with. Um, what we have here is a uh, Cockroft uh, Walton multiplier, voltage multiplier. Um, it's out of a dental x-ray machine. Of the, uh, It's an inverter type x-ray machine which you can see the rest of in there. Let's use the mouse down here. Um, Got the x-ray machine off eBay, uh, about $30 shipped to me. Um, pulled it out. I was hoping maybe it would have a, a standard type uh, iron cord transformer to play with, but this is cool as well. Um, gonna power it off a few different power sources. Uh, here it's a tiny little flyback on a, uh, a uh, what's left of a plasma sphere. Um, and this, uh, it produces decent arc space. This um, flyback doesn't really output much of anything at all. Um, looks maybe about 3 kilovolt around that. At really basically no current. Um, but it still actually powers this up pretty good. Which is proof that uh, the high frequencies are working better. Um, you can also see I have an NST and a, I'll pr probably bring another one down. Um show later in the video of a higher voltage. This one's uh, 7500 volts 30 milliamp. The other one's uh, 12 kilovolt 30 milliamp. Um, and then see I have it arcing from the output. Um, this is ground wire that runs over to wa my water main and a ground rod. Um, you can see that here's the board and it's basically composed of a ladder of high voltage capacitors and diodes and it's in mineral oil as you can see that's the mineral oil from the x-ray head um, the capacitors uh, the composed of, I haven't really looked at the diodes but capacitors are rated at 15 kilovolt and I haven't really deciphered the microfarad rating or the farad rating on them it's, it says .001 capital M uh, I'm not exactly sure what um, notation of the capacitance that is, but uh, not too worried about it yet, especially because I want to leave them where they are. Um, I also haven't really looked at what kind of uh, Cockroft uh, Walton multiplier this is. Um, I think it's a full wave. Uh, not sure. Um, I'm not sure how many stages either. I thought it was eight trying to count, but looks the way some of the uh, capacitors are paralleled and stuff like that. I, I can't exactly tell, but maybe I'll figure it out later. Um, so, yeah, you can see the, the board originally had a small transformer there where the square is right there. Um, it was a weird kind of transformer. It didn't run on mains. I assume the control box for the original X-ray head uh, probably had... Uh, as, uh, the driver circuitry in that and it you know provided the high frequency and then it was probably something similar to a flyback transformer which powered this um, so I couldn't really reuse that so I need to power it with whatever else I can use um, uh, maybe I'll bring that transformer down to show you later um, so yeah I guess I'll quick yakking and I'll get some footage here of it fired up and arcing. It's pretty cool. Okay, let me show you real quick um, what it looks like arcing from this flyback uh, plasma globe driver. Um, I don't know if you can hear it right now, but there's some hiss from Corona. It's probably too faint for the microphone to pick up, though. But let's move it a little closer. see that little thing. It does run it pretty well. Especially when you compare it to the NST, you'll see that this at 
that, you know, um, I guess because I can hear the tone it creates, it's probably somewhere around maybe 17 kilohertz. Um, and from what I've heard, I believe that's a lot more efficient than these voltage multipliers. Um, the 60 hertz or 1E maybe with the split phase center tap, I'm not sure how that works. Uh, but <laughs> that's not nearly as efficient at those frequencies of, I guess, for this. Um, but, see, that's pretty cool, uh, especially considering that flyback. I think the whole plasma globe was rated like 10 watts or 20 watts or less, so nice little high voltage spark from, uh, from that. So that's pretty cool, but um, I also have a few NSTs hooked up to it, and uh, more powerful, but really not too much more voltage, uh, well, because they get higher input voltage, but I think it doesn't run nearly as well because the frequency isn't as high, but let me show you that. Okay, we're back. Um, now I'm running it off a NST, this one's 7.5 kilovolt. 30 milliamp, um, actually, uh, oh, and about the NSD, it does have a, uh, the secondary ground fault protection on it, GFI, so occasionally, it's not too temperamental, I can't really remove it because it's potted in a bad material and I don't feel like going through that, so, um, but it's not too temperamental, it usually is pretty fine, and if it does trip, I usually just kind of bump it with a chicken stick here, my safe, <laughs> wonderful chicken stick, yeah, it's great, um, <laughs> it's what I had lying around, uh, and then it just, uh, you know, if it trips, I just reset it real quick, so, it hasn't really caused much of a problem, let's, uh, one thing cool you'll notice, yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you can kind of see it, especially around that input wire near the gray uh, capacitor in the front by those two resistors. Um, there actually is, uh, I think, eddy currents or something, some of that, in the uh, in the mineral oil because of the amount of uh, voltage that's flowing through it. So it's actually creating little vortices in the mineral oil, which is kind of cool. But all right, let's get to the arcs. I mean, they can be a little, but oh, maybe a little bit longer than the ones created by that little, little low voltage flyback, you know, three kilovolt flyback, but they're a lot more ferocious, a little more power going through them, obviously, um, and it's pretty cool, low, less frequent, but let's a little closer, oop, trip on GF. There we go. Phone's making my wire here. Phone's making noises. Sorry about that. Um, right now it's not showing it well. I might have to check one of the connections or uh, occasionally, depending on how corroded my wire is getting here, it affects the, the output. But, when it's at that kind of real sparky phase, I'm thinking it's it's somewhere around um, like somewhere around there, maybe 20 to 30 kilovolt. It's hard to tell, and it varies, you know, how temperamental it is at that time. But that's it's pretty cool. It has potential. Um, like I say, I don't. It must be really. Kind of really inefficient at this lower frequency out of the NST. Um, if I have time, I really want to make a, a high-powered flyback driver, maybe a, a ZVS or something even simple. I don't know, just uh, something 100 watts or something like that. That'd be cool. Um, you know, once I get this at the higher frequencies, a lot more efficient, and I think I can pull some pretty big arcs, at least quite a few inches. 
Um, you know, because this, when it was in the x-ray trans, or x-ray head, it was rated at, you know, 70 kilovolts pulse. And I should, you know, depending on what I input in it, uh, be able to get at least that. I know, you know, this mineral oil might be a little humidified now, a little wet, but early on, depending uh, if it had time to charge up and no good place to arc to, it was actually arcing in the mineral oil, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, it has potential, but just playing with it, just kind of hooked up a few things tonight in a few minutes. As you can see, though, it does work. At least increasing the voltage. It's a thinner arc, but it's certainly at least twice as big as the arc just from the 7.5 kilovolt NFC. So it's fun. Um, yeah, I think... I think I have the energy to tote down my uh, 12 kilovolt on SD, so let me show you that in a minute here. All right, hey, and now we're cooking with gas. Um, this is my other NST. I have three. There's a 9,000 volt one also, but I mean, it's the same as that one uh, looks wise, but I figured there was no point. Um, this is my 12 kilovolt NST. This one's 30 milliamp um, Transco. Uh, as you can see, quite a bit larger than the other one, also quite a bit heavier. <laughs> this one, uh, it's fun to lug around. <laughs> um, uh, it's, uh, this is my, I, I really like this NST, mostly because those insulators look really cool. Uh, they're a lot more interesting looking than a lot of NST insulators, and uh, it's also powerful and uh, solid and stuff like that, and it's the one I've used for a Jacob's Ladder and stuff. Um, it also has ground fault protection, but this one actually, if I pull a rivet over, out over here and then a screw over here, the this is all potted where the transformer is, and about here back, there's the ground fault circuitry and the input and like that. So, if I ever did want to bypass it, it would be fairly easy. So this one's nice, but I think I'll leave it as is for now. Um, I just tested it out, it, a uh, slight increase in arc length, definitely a lot more power, um, I gotta say, I think it might be fairly limited here, actually, in, um, what I can get out of a 60 hertz source or so, um, I think, but it was at least more interesting than that one, so I think it's worth showing, um, be back in a second, uh, set this down, power it up. Uh, okay, got everything powered up. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but this one, uh, yeah, a lot of Corona. And that is really cool. If you check on that wire, it is drawing mineral oil up the wire due to the electric current. Or the um, high voltage which that is really cool. And you can see flows in the, in the mineral oil. Uh, that actually might be a lot of the losses. Maybe that's why I'm not... Maybe at this frequency there's losses to the corona and the moving and that's why the arcs aren't that substantial for the voltage. So, But that's cool. Um, this... The uh, GFI circuitry on this NST is a little bit more sensitive than the other one. It actually shuts off right away, but the good thing is it has a uh, a test mode, which basically I think for uh, 29 minutes, yeah, basically half an hour, um, where it'll give you status lights on what's going on with transformer, but it just basically powers through and shuts off the GFI, which is nice half an hour of GFI free but it's also there I don't have to remove it so um, that's nice and there's a lot of ozone <laughs> so, so let's get it arcing it's probably gonna cut out right away because the GFI but oh yep GFI see red green light turn red yeah amber test mode and it keeps running. See a decent arc. 
Whoa. <laughs> that was sweet. I'm not sure what happened. I initiated some sort of arc between and it didn't blow anything up, so that was cool. Ah! Uh, maybe somehow because this is split phase or something, it's shitting. But, uh, yeah, there's quite a few kilovolts between that. That was cool. Uh, glad I'm staying far away from this thing. That's interesting, huh? <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. I hope the camera caught it. I don't feel like duplicating it because it's mighty close to my NST I like, so um, I think that'll be what I'll do for now. It's certainly a bigger arc than is normally possible with this NST, so it's certainly doing something. Okay, so that was fun. Um, definitely have to be careful of this thing. Uh, I don't necessarily think it would kill me too easily. The NST I know <laughs> probably could. Um, everything can. I don't know what kind of currents we're getting on that DC output. Because, um, you know, you worry because there's capacitors, you know, you can get the high current burst. Uh, and the NST's danger. And whatever was happening between those two wires right off the NST was something interesting. Um, definitely treat this thing with respect, and I'll probably get a better chicken stick as well. Uh, actually, I believe my chicken stick with that valve on it is actually part of an air cannon, it's, but it's a pretty long piece of PVC even with the metal on it. Uh, <laughs> I believe that metal close enough there uh, was what... Um, bridge that gap enough to create the arc between those two wires. So, glad my hand was far away from it. Um, I also noticed, I played back some of the video real quick, uh, a lot of interference I think on the microphone f from the uh, loudness of that arc. So, uh, I hope you can decipher what I said, even though I probably didn't say anything overly meaningful, kind of rambling, uh, but if not, maybe I'll try to put some uh, annotation subtitles up to basically summarize what I said if you couldn't hear it over the arcing. Um, yeah, this will uh, this will be a fun project to work on um, carefully. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if any of you who know, pr probably most of you know a lot more about this than I do, would like any uh, nice uh, comments or constructive criticism uh, or help on this or ideas that would be much appreciated. Uh, thanks for sticking through it.